Your opening line sounds like shit. That's what my speaker coach told me 24 hours ago. <laughs> now that's encouragement. Thanks, Peter. You notice Nassim didn't say anything about me. That's because I told her I don't have a script. Two days ago, I got an email. It said, call me as soon as you get this. It was from a colleague at the American Cancer Society. And immediately, my stomach clenched. I knew what it was about, but I called her. A mutual friend and another colleague had just lost her battle to cancer. I remember the last time I saw her, she looked at me with shining eyes, so full of love and life and hope. Then last night, I got an email from a law school classmate I hadn't heard from in over six years. He said, sorry to be so direct. I have only limited energy right now, so I have to get to the point. I'm lying in bed, feeling like death would be better off than medicine. My stomach and esophagus burn, my joints hurt, I can't stay awake, and I feel my mood is spiraling down a dark hole. How did you get through this? Oddly enough, it's kind of how I felt last night. I wrote back, you will get through this. There is no doubt in my mind. I know this because I've been where you are. It feels like shit. And like it will never end, it's going to get better. When I was going through my treatment, I repeated the mantra, this too shall pass, to help me stay in the present. You can handle anything for one breath. Live breath to breath. Whatever you feel as you breathe, recognize it and let it go. What I found is that if you don't try to push the pain away, but just acknowledge it, it starts to go away on its own. That's because nothing lasts forever, even though it can feel that way sometimes. It's good to acknowledge your feelings. It's okay to feel like shit, to feel pain, or to be afraid. You don't have to be strong for anyone. Just notice what you feel, acknowledge it, and let it go. This might sound like a contradiction, but it's also really helpful to think of three things every day that you're grateful for. I know that sounds crazy when you're fighting cancer, but staying positive helps you heal faster. It also helps with pain and depression. The darker you feel, the more you have to consciously focus on positive thoughts. When you come through this, you are going to be a stronger person. So, three things you can do right now. One, practice gratitude. Remind yourself of three things every day you're grateful for. You might have to dig deep, but you can always find something positive in the darkest of times. Two, live breath to breath. Don't worry about what's going to happen five seconds, five minutes, or five days from now. You can handle anything for the space of a breath. Three, notice what you feel physically and emotionally. Trust me, sometimes it's better to stop pushing and just go with the flow. Do whatever makes you feel better. If that means doing nothing, give yourself permission to do nothing. 
I decided to take my own advice and make this talk about three things I'm grateful for. Three things that let me smile through the tears. One, the donor who saved my life. Two, the chance to help others. And three, pursuing my Olympic dream. I've been obsessed with the Olympics since I was six years old. I started out as a competitive swimmer. By the time I was eight years old, I was training four to five hours a day. The hard work paid off. By the time I was 14, I was ranked fourth in the United States. By the time I was 16, I'd broken the Nigerian record, which isn't exactly as impressive as it sounds, considering most black people don't swim. <laughs> but I was on track to compete at the 2000 Olympics for Nigeria. Three months before the Olympic Games, I broke my spine in a training accident. Ugh. I was pissed. So pissed, I even tried to commit suicide, overdosed on drugs. Didn't work. So I tried again in 2004. I was going to make it. This time I was going to choose a shorter event, 50-meter freestyle. The Olympic B-cut was a 23.69. At the qualifying meet, I swam a 23.81 and missed the Olympics by a tenth of a second. You've got to be kidding me. Undeterred, I decided to use my brain instead of my brawn for my third attempt at the Olympics. I thought, if I'm Nigerian and I want to represent Nigeria, why not try for a sport where no other Nigerians are competing? Nigeria doesn't have winter, so I'm going to become the first winter Olympian from Nigeria. <laughs> and I'm happy to say that I've actually started the Winter Olympic Federation of Nigeria. Membership won. <laughs> my chosen sport may make you question my mental balance. <laughs> it's a cross between applied physics and escaping a lunatic asylum. It's called the skeleton. Dun, dun, dun! You start at the top of a bobsled track with a small sled, and you go into a full sprint. After about 10 or 15 steps, dive on headfirst and hold on. Halfway down the track, you're going upwards of 80 miles an hour with nothing but a thin plastic helmet and a spandex suit between you and some very hard concrete. That's about when you start to realize, maybe this was not such a good idea. <laughs> but, in my case at least, as long as I make it from the top of the track to the bottom in one piece, and that is not a guarantee, I am the Nigerian Skeleton Champion! <laughs> and in order to make it to the 2018 Winter Olympics, all I have to do is be in the top 60 in the world, and number one from Africa. Now, that might sound like a lot, but there are actually only about 80 people in the world stupid or crazy enough to do this sport. <laughs> and none of them are African. <laughs> so realistically, I just have to beat 20 people. Three years just before they announced Norway, I hope you hear the name Nigeria, and halfway across the world, 175 million people are going to look up and say, what the hell? <laughs> the second thing I'm grateful for is the cord blood donor who saved my life. Six years ago, I stood on a stage just like this in Lagos, Nigeria. I had leukemia, and I needed a bone marrow donor to save my life. I couldn't find one, and that's a situation that's common for most African Americans. In fact, if you have sickle cell, a solid tumor, leukemia, lymphoma, over 70 diseases that can be cured with a bone marrow transplant, and you're a minority, you're screwed. I was one of the lucky few. A Nigerian woman came to the United States and gave birth. She donated her umbilical cord, and the stem cells in that cord matched me. The odds of that happening, I don't know. But today I'm standing before you, six years cancer-free. The cord blood transplant did some weird things to me. I mean, I literally have the cells of a five-year-old floating throughout my body. 
Maybe that's why my favorite TV show is SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> I'm not joking. I've watched every episode of every season. The last thing I'm grateful for is the chance to help others. After I did the drive in Nigeria, I decided, well, if the problem for African Americans is finding a donor, what's the solution? Part of it is genetics. Genetically, people of African descent are just more diverse. So finding someone who's your exact genetic twin is very hard. But a, problem, a part of the problem that I can solve is the lack of black donors. I'm from Nigeria. I'm going to tell you a secret. I know where a lot of black people live. <laughs> in Africa! Why not start a donor registry in Nigeria? I went to some experts and they said, oh, this is going to take 10 or 15 years. We launched in 2012. The Minister of Health of Nigeria found out about the registry when a reporter called him to congratulate him on the registry. He was like, what registry? <laughs> so a team of doctors had to go and be like, so sorry, so sorry. <laughs> this guy is just not living a scripted life. As you go home today, remember, life is not theater. It's an arena. We are gladiators. There will be times when you feel you can't take another step, when your head is bowed, and bloody. Remember to breathe. You can get through anything for a breath. Never doubt that your actions can change the world. The donor who gave me a second chance at life and through me has started a movement that could save thousands of others never found out because of confidentiality agreements what she accomplished. Your actions, whether you know it or not, could mean all the world to someone else. As you go home, my call to you is break through and live free. Thank you.